Morning, hello. Oh, I'm in the spotlight today, look. Yes, yes, yes. Windows down. Should we go the fast way or the slow way? Fast way or the slow way? Fast way, slow way, fast way, slow way. Oh. Let's not go the fast way to hospital, eh? We're going the fast way. You get it right, boys and girls. And uh, you know, people who prefer not to specify. I'm gonna put my wing mirror in because this is a narrow lane. And I'm gonna put my windows up because it's a cold day. Oh no. Oh keep me in to oil that clutch. What a nuisance. I have to go slowly this way because I'm looking right into the sun. Can't see a blooming thing. We well, have a funny situation with my my uh, bedroom because uh, I've got this fantastic watch, which is a Seconda, I think. Hang on, Casio, Casio, and it's sort of. Uh, powered by light. So uh, it sort of charges up during the day, you know, and uh, it's been very good. I, You can check the battery level and uh, it came with the battery was pretty flat. And in fact, funnily enough, I saw war in, I thought oh, it'll charge up, but in fact, it wasn't until I sort of left it on a windowsill in the sun for like the best part of a day that it got up to full battery but since then actually it's done pretty well and then I thought I'd check the battery again I thought it might be running down a bit because obviously being a dentist I work indoors all day um, but in fact it's still pretty much on full battery so whatever light it's getting it's getting see at the moment it's getting enough but when I'm in the shower I used to put it on the windowsill in the morning and then uh, But uh, I've got this funny situation where in the winter the sun shines in the bedroom and onto the windowsill because the sun is low enough. But in the uh, summer the uh, sun is obviously higher in the sky and so the light doesn't shine through the window onto the windowsill. So it actually gets more light in the morning in the uh, winter than it does in the, uh, in the day. This bit, see all this curb on the left here, they put all this curb in, they put drains in. First thing that happened is the drains got completely blocked up because this is a very muddy country lane. It's got tractors going up and down it all the time. And uh, you can see the mud. And that bit always floods. Every time there's any rain, there's like a foot of water there. And it all runs off these fields to the right, which are still soaking wet. You can see them, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. So that was another couple of tens of thousands of public money completely wasted trying to put in a drainage system. I mean, I don't even know where it's draining to. There are no drains around here. There are no drains around here. They've only just got water, this, this part of the world. You know. We've got telephone, but then because we can't get uh, uh, Wi-Fi at any sort of reasonable speed, we all get a Wi-Fi for a Wi-Max outfit called V-Fast that beams it in on antennas, a bit like uh, Elon, you know, like a low-budget version of Elon Musk Starlink. And uh, oh, there we go. Now we have to use the Mark One mirror motor to put that out, and then we might be able to get a bit without the sun in our eyes. Yeah, so, so what happened is they put all these phone cables in and nobody uses them because everyone's got a WiMAX antenna on their house. You can't get, you know, they won't roll out fibre to the box. The nearest box that they're going to roll out fibre to is about four miles away from us and then it has to go over four miles of uh, copper cable. So there's no way it's... Uh, we're ever going to get high-speed internet. 
So I've signed up for the Starlink, the satellite thing, but that's a bit of a nightmare at the moment because uh, it, it never was. I mean, no, Musk is, not only is he busy, busy building Teslas, and we're not as he trying to steal the shorts off of the short sellers that keep trying to say Tesla price is overblown and built on nothing. Not only is he boring a tunnel from Los Angeles to San Francisco or wherever with his boring company, not only is he a major contractor for the American government putting satellites in space and commercial satellites in space with his SpaceX and putting people on the International Space Station and planning a trip to Mars. He, he hasn't got time to get around. He's, he's put Starlink satellites up, you know, with first sort of really successful commercial network of uh, uh, satellites, which was supposed to provide a high-speed broadband, very low latency, to people who live in the country like me, except that they mean, when they say live in the country, they mean live in the country like the United States. I don't even think they've got a framework for rolling it out to other countries. I think they'll, you know, they'll they'll probably roll it out to the Gambia and the Africa before they will to the UK. Pardon me, it's so cold. The, the tip of my nose has got itchy because it's so cold. Let's try not to run over this idiot. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so they want to uh, because it's an American company, so of course it's it's within their their FCC framework. But you know, supposing you could uh, you developed a TV station that was capable of broadcasting to the entire world, can you imagine the regulatory problems, the obstacles, the hurdles you'd have to overcome in every country for them to be happy for you to do that? You know, and then and certainly on the internet, I mean, the, everything on the internet has to go through, basically has to go through GCHQ, uh, through through the National Firewall. So, which is odd, really, because, you know, we go on and on and on about Chinese people having to use a VPN to get on Facebook. And in fact, we have to go through GCHQ just to get on the internet ourselves. So um, I don't think uh, I don't think uh, MI5 and MI6 and uh, Scotland Yard are going to be very happy about Elon Musk providing me with a direct link to a satellite that you know puts my internet through America. They're not going to have much direct visibility into that system, are they? Oh dear me, no, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and people who don't specify. <laughs> So I think that might be uh, responsible for some of the delay. Also, there's a worldwide chip shortage, so which is, uh, you know, fish and chips are a big uh, uh, dietary staple in the UK. And uh, it's the, uh, of course it's not that type of chip, is it? It's not that type of chip, it's not that type of chip. Of course not, it's um, semiconductors. But semiconductors are, uh, you know, a big part of the satellite dishes. And they're there at the moment. They're still in the sort of the experimental phase. These dishes, they keep uh, what they do is they're, they're manufacturing um, uh, dishes, which are costing them money. You know, they're making a loss on these dishes, these alpha phase dishes. And then when they've uh, sort of miniaturised everything and put everything on a single chip or a single circuit board. They'll be able to manufacture a volume at much lower prices, and I think that they're trying to delay the rollout until uh, uh, until you know they can sell these things at, at least at a break even. Um, but of course, everyone's really impatient. The uh, if you uh, go on their if you go on their site and then you change your details. And they've got a little thing where you can put an X, a, a sort of a dot on the map where you are, on the on their world map. And then if you change the dot by even as much as like 10 feet, uh, you go on the end of the waiting list again. 
because <laughs> they treat it as a new application. So the word is don't don't muck about with your application. Just wait patiently till you get to the front of the queue. But the queue, you know, it was um, mid to late 2021. It's now late 2021. And pretty soon that will be changed to uh, late 21 to early 22 and then mid mid 22, you know, I mean, it's just, the whole thing is a bit of a farce. But, anyway, I'm on the waiting list. It's a bit funny, it's a bit like being on the waiting list for a Ferrari, you know. You can cancel at any time. My bloody nose is driving me mad. You can cancel at any time and get your money back. Because you have to put down like a £100 deposit or something just to indicate that you're serious. <laughs> I think at the moment, the customers are more serious about buying the dishes than they are about producing them, to be quite honest. And then the British government has been chucked out of the European Satellite Project, uh, European Union, um, you know, which is a bit of a cheat, really, because it was a lot of it was our technology and our scientists and our, our investment and they've sort of just uh, slung us out when we left the European Union. And so we bought our own satellite system. And we bought, a, I think it's an Indian satellite system that had gone bankrupt because it was, it had sort of run out of cash or something. And it was, uh, it was designed, anyway, it wasn't designed for what we want to use it for. These, all these satellites, they're all at the wrong altitude and, uh, it's all uh, we're we're hoping to be able to use them for GPS and uh, they're not suitable for GPS or that. Anyway, I know there's something wrong with it. It's totally there's all the wrong frequencies and everything and, and the wrong uh, altitudes. But uh, but we had to you know we had to say that we got a satellite system, so we bought this one. So. What they can do is they can say to the population, "Don't you worry, guys. We've got we got we got a satellite system. You know. But in the meantime, I've got a sneaking suspicion that it's not. We're not really using it much. <laughs> I think we're probably still using uh, the American GPS satellites, and then eventually we'll probably use Starlink. It's tricky, isn't it? And then uh, Bezos, who owns Amazon, and Musk." who own Starlink, Bezos, and they're competing to go into space. They've both taken civilians into space, Bezos like a week earlier, but a bit lower, and Musk, who's the really serious uh, space contender, who's, well, you know, who's got the big rockets. Um, Bezos has now said he wants to put up his own uh, satellite system. So, so if, you're re if you're listening to this in the future, or reading the, tra the AI transcription, then the reason why you can't see any of the stars is because these two idiots, Musk and Bezos, have covered the sky with satellites, not to mention every other bloody country. That's assuming that they haven't uh, all smashed into each other and all gone off course and, and all um, all broken up into just a mass great floating debris, an oort cloud around the earth. Anyway, I've got a nice day today. What's today? Wednesday. Wednesday's today. I'll go out for a drink with a friend of mine. We had to get rid of another patient yesterday. She, uh, she's a nice lady. She came in. She got upper right two and upper right three. Snapped off at gum level. Completely snapped off, just above gum level. No sign of any uh, nerves or anything. Just snapped off flat, and obviously very upset with the fact that she hasn't got any teeth. And this weird uh, story about how her dentist cemented one of her crowns back in or something. And then, but no, can't really explain what's happening about the other crown. And um, so we booked her in, uh, I told her that she need to have two crowns. 
but before that we need to do two root treatments so we need two root treatments two posts and cores and two crowns and I wasn't that happy about even quoting for it because you can bet your life that one of those teeth's got no no bloody root canal so you know it's going to be a tricky job and uh and she needed a scale and polish. So she then rang up and said, look, I'm, I'm a bit worried about the scale and polish because I've got a phobia about scale and polishing. I hate having my teeth scale and polished and even just ringing you up to tell you this and let you know has got me feeling very, very stressed. I'm very sweaty and, you know, and, and, and I want to know what, you know, what do you suggest? What do you suggest? So what do you think we suggested? What do you think? Pause the video if you can't think what we suggested. And then if I tell you, if you still can't think that, I'll give you a clue. It also said in her notes that she'd come to us because she was unhappy with her previous dentist. Only one, but, you know, but her last dentist had uh, not, not, you know, done something wrong, not made her happy. I think it was because obviously, uh, you know, they'd stuck this crown on and the tooth had broken. And I pointed out, and this is a funny thing, and if you're a dentist, you'll know this. If a, t a patient comes in and says they've got a crown fallen off, and you look, and the crown's literally it's snapped off at gum level, and the tooth, half the tooth is inside the crown, and the other half of the tooth is still inside their gum. So what you do is you say to them, <clears throat> this, <clears throat> the crown hasn't fallen off, the tooth has snapped in half. And you say, look, I can demonstrate this because here is the tooth, the bit of the tooth, still inside the crown, right? It's not hollow. It should be hollow. It should fit over the top of the tooth, like a crash, a crash helmet. And they look at it and they go, oh, like, you know, it's like this. I don't understand why people can't understand what's happened. Perhaps they, they can't conceive that their tooth might break in half without any, uh, I don't know, it should fall over a bit. You should have gone then, you should have gone then. Carpe diem, you know. But uh, no, they can't, uh, they look at it and they go, oh, oh. They don't go, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I can see that now. They just go, oh, you know, like. Like their, like their whole world view has suddenly changed. Everything up is down and black is white. So that's when you say, I can't, but so, but can't you stick it back on then? Can't you stick it back on then? <laughs> like, what am I speaking, Swahili? <laughs> there is no tooth to stick it back on to. The bit of tooth that it's stuck on to is, it is still stuck to. It's in the crown. <laughs> oh, God. And then you don't, I don't know. Do you, um, I mean, a lot of dentists I know would just do a quick uh, root filling, stick a dentator, screw up the tooth, drill the crown out and stick the crown back on but you know and I have done that in the past and I'm not saying that it doesn't work for a year or two but I just don't uh, this uh, outstanding dental law partnership case has, has just had a chilling effect on my dentistry there's no denying that it has I'm just, you know, I found myself doing bite wings on an eight-year-old the other day. What was it, an uh, 11 year old? Yeah, 11 year old. And I thought, you know, really, and I wouldn't have done it normally because her teeth are perfect. But you're like, you know, but, oh, you start thinking to yourself, oh, but supposing she has got a hole. Supposing she's got a big hole in her tooth and, uh, you know, and she starts to get toothache in a year's time. And then we do bite wings then and we find out that she had a hole and she probably had it, she's got it today, you know, and we didn't do bite wings today, therefore we didn't diagnose it and so it was diagnosed late. 
and therefore the filling's bigger than it would have been, you know. I mean, that's 8,000 quid. That's, that is exactly what I'm being sued for. Missing a filling on a on a X-ray, which can only be seen with hindsight, and that's, I'm being sued for 8,000 quid. And it's, uh, you know, I've got a nurse who's learning, uh, I've got a, a, a a receptionist is training out to be a nurse and she's doing the, the section in Levison's on professionalism and I said professionalism is basically is putting the patient's interest before your own I said that's right in a nutshell but there's those chap those chapters on it on professionalism and uh, <clears throat> and uh, I said that people like learned people who've got like quite there's a big knowledge gap between the dentist and the patient they're that's why they need to be professional because they could take advantage of people if they wanted to. They could sell them stuff they didn't need. They could tell them stuff that wasn't true. They've got no way of disproving it. But, you know, you, you, you do that for 40 years. 40 years you act like a professional and put the patient's interests first. And then you're not treated like a professional. If the slightest thing goes wrong, you're treated like a criminal. That's the truth of it. You're... Um, you're not given, you're, you're not, you're nothing, you know, you're nothing. All those years of putting other people before yourself. <clears throat> I'm not going to say what I was going to say next, but you can probably guess. Okay, all right, sorry to end on such a downer. I'll, um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.